Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the 2021 year-end statistics. So we're just going to go over 2021 and bring out a recap in regards to what took place. So the first area we're going to touch is our violent crime. Uh, 2021, we finished off with uh, a 6% increase. And just so that everyone knows, when we're talking about violent crime, we're looking at our sex crimes, our murders, our robberies, aggravated batteries, and assaults. Okay. Taking a look at domestic violence as part of our violent crime numbers, 39.6% of our violent crime were domestic related. So this is a 3% increase in comparison to where we ended the year in 2020. Uh, 2020 was a rough year for us in regards to homicides, where we ended with 36 for the year. For 2021, we ended with 24 homicides, which essentially was a 33% decrease. Our, unfortunately, we had four domestic-related homicides in 2021. Uh, with that being said, also, I want, wanted to point out we had a 100% solve rate in regards to those. So our aggravated assaults, we were up by 7%, and as previously indicated, that number is also reflective in the increase that you saw for our violent crime numbers. Our victims struck by gunfire in 2020, we were at 170. 2021, 164. So that's a 3.5% decrease, but of course it, the numbers are still way too high, if you ask us at any given point. So these crimes become difficult for us too because quite often we're dealing with a lot of the same offenders that are back and forth with rival members as it may be. So definitely it works a lot better for us when we have cooperation from our victims who have been shot. Uh, it's unfortunate that all too often we don't receive that cooperation if it's you know gang involved and they just rather get revenge on their own. Gun recoveries, uh, this is a very interesting slide here. I'd like to say the officers did a great job in 2020 where we had 281 guns recovered, but taking a look at 2021 with 433 guns being recovered, that's a 54% increase in guns. Of course, we'd like to wrap our minds around where all these additional guns are coming from. It's something that we're definitely working on on a constant basis. Uh, I've made the statement before in regards to our gun owners being responsible and securing their guns and securing places so definitely a vehicle is not an appropriate place to consider your gun being secured and just to add to that um, just the men and women on the department that are out every day um, following up on leads making these gun arrests uh, you can tell just by the increase what a phenomenal job that they've done over the past year and I'll say also we're off to a great start for 2022 as well with our property crimes, we saw a decrease in 7.4%. Um, I would say we take a look at the catalytic converter thefts that have been plaguing us lately. Uh, we did see that trend start to uptick toward the end of 2021 as well. So we've made some arrests in regards to the suspects responsible for that, and we'll continue to uh, drive forward on that effort as well. Our robberies uh, showed a 1% increase over 2020 to 2021. Auto thefts, I'm gonna to touch on this because this is something that's plaguing. I know it was reported in the news um, over the weekend where there were four Rockford teens involved in a stolen vehicle. We have seen an increase in the stolen autos. It's not, it's pretty common that we see it nonetheless as the winter months come into play with people leaving their cars running and unattended. I will say we have had several groups of individuals responsible for our uptick and auto thefts and we're continuing to work on that as well. With our narcotic recoveries, I think the numbers kind of speak for themselves. Um, just want to add a thank you to CVS for providing us with the drug boxes at all three districts that allow our citizens to be responsible and come in and get rid of any prescription medications that they have. So we'll take all pills, I should say, if they want to come in and get rid of them in a proper manner. 
So just taking a look at the violent crime trend from 2017 to 2021, there was a decrease overall, taking a look at those five years by 4%. All right, for our homicides, like I said, 2020 was a rough year. Um, you take a look at 2021 where we're down. So even though we had less in 2021, overall, there is a bit of an uptick if you average out the five years. Okay, so once again, taking a look at uh, the domestic violent crimes over that five years. Um, overall, I'll say shortly after the mayor went into office and the focus really shifted and we started to take a deep dive into met to domestic violence. Overall, there was an 11.6% increase over that five years. And I'd say with the education piece that was put out there, we expected to see an increase in the domestic violence being reported. A call for service over the past five years, we're looking at a 1% increase. And that concludes my presentation. I'm going to yield the floor to the mayor. Thank you, Chief. Uh, just want to say, uh, as we look over these last two years, obviously uh, been an incredibly stressful time for everyone. And I think uh, when you look at your personal life as well as your professional life, it seems like everything has been turned upside down in our community. Uh, as a result of it being turned upside down, you can look at every major city uh, across the United States and you're seeing something consistent. You're seeing high rates of violent crime uh, through every major city. Uh, it's one thing to be able to say that. I can just say as someone who lives here in Rockford, uh, it's great to know that trend, but that really doesn't make a difference to any of us who call Rockford home. Uh, the amount of violence that we're seeing right now is absolutely not acceptable. Uh, this violence really does a lot of different things, right? It can scare some folks, it can frustrate others, and it can anger us uh, that this violence continues to persist. What we've been traditionally doing is just not getting the results that we all want and that our citizens deserve. So while we're actively taking steps to increase enforcement uh, and hold our violent offenders accountable, we're also working to stop crime at its roots. Uh, we're taking a holistic approach that sees public safety not just as a simply a Rockford Police Department issue, but as an entire community-wide issue. We need every single person in our community. That means all government bodies, that means all of our nonprofit organizations, our faith community, our businesses, and every single citizen to help us if we're gonna be successful as we fight crime. As Chief Red just highlighted, nearly 40% of all of our city's violent crime uh, is domestic violence related. So we're continuing to do our work to help reduce domestic violence throughout our city. And to provide you a brief update, Update. The Family Peace Center uh, has now served more than 700 survivors since July of 2020. Our multidisciplinary team is focusing on getting survivors out of their dangerous situations and into safety by providing wraparound, holistic method of supporting survivors and their children so that we can finally break that cycle of violence. Our domestic violence enhanced response team works at identifying and providing a coordinated response to high-risk domestic violence cases. We also have an educators team and our educators team meets monthly. They organize an annual educator summit to educate local teachers about domestic violence and human trafficking and provide them tools that they can implement in their classroom on a daily basis. And we've now trained more than 500 educators throughout, uh, our, throughout the city of Rockford. This group also is providing us really wonderful insight on how to make our schools a safer place for our students to learn and our teachers to do what they do best, which is educate. As we look at our youth, this is something that's startling. If you look at the fact that of all the juveniles that we are arresting for violent offenses, 75% of them uh, grew up in a household where there was either physical or sexual violence taking place in that household. They were either the uh, survivor or a witness of that violence. So those young people have experienced a traumatic incident. 
So in order to stop this cycle of violence that was just uh, outlined in the PowerPoint presentation, we have to get to our youth. So, so I want to outline three critical steps that we are taking to address uh, the youth violence uh, throughout the city of Rockford. Number one, we need to interrupt violence for our youth right away, immediately. And those programs and some of the programs that are included in our efforts to do that include Camp Hope, Step Up, Juvenile Recovery and Crime Prevention, our No Entry Program, all of these are working uh, all of these are working to stop those who have experienced trauma from entering into uh, the school to prison pipeline. Our new Rockford Park District Summer Camp Partnership will be working to create a well-rounded EduRec summer curriculum. This program will be provided in a, set, in a setting that aims to identify and mitigate trauma carried by participants and include strategies that are identified to prevent youth violence from occurring as well as reduce immediate and long-term harms in order to prevent future violence. In addition, we're beginning, uh, we're beginning assessment and planning uh, with the courts, guided by people with lived experience to identify promising diversion strategies to deter youth recidivism rates. We're also working with a newly formed grassroots coalition. These folks are literally the boots on the ground, and they're only interested in one thing, helping our youth. They have put their egos aside, competition aside, and are literally there just for the good of our young people. The, they are out in the streets talking to those individuals in our community most impacted by violence, and as well as talking to those individuals who are committing the violence. And they're helping our community look for new solutions. We're partnering with other organizations like the Park District, the Boys and Girls Club, Youth Services Network, YMCA, The Right Way, and Men of War Ministries. We're working with the Rockford Public School System to also implement new initiatives for our youth. I want to just highlight two of them that I think are really important. One is Handle with Care that our community has not put in place yet. Uh, we believe Handle with Care will be implemented on March 15th. That's our goal. Uh, and Handle with Care is so critical. If we, if we know the data shows us that the violence is occurring from individuals impacted by violence, we have to interrupt that trauma and make sure that we're putting services around these young people immediately when they experience a traumatic incident. If we can couple that handle with care, with trauma, uh, with crisis response teams, we can make a significant impact in the lives of our young people. Step two, we need to build real, sustainable alternatives for youth that don't involve criminal activity. So at the city, we're expanding our summer employment opportunities for our young people. We want our, our kids, and these are all of our kids, to develop work skills, obtain some mentoring, and all of this will help contribute so that they can function independently, so that they can have positive uh, post-secondary uh, experiences with positive uh, post-secondary education, and they can thrive in social situations. So some of the programs, last year we implemented a program with our water department that we hired at-risk youth. We're gonna expand that program, that's one. Number two, we're expanding and starting a new program around landscaping. And number three, we're uh, partnering with a local concrete business so that we can hire young people at risk, teach them uh, transferable skills and skills that can pay them an incredibly good wage as they grow up and provide them tremendous opportunities for themselves and their families. And we need to create a pipeline of these opportunities. And I think one of those opportunities is the Rockford Promise initiative. I'm excited that the number of applicants this year to Rockford Promise has dramatically increased and I'll remind you that 79 we increased the number of kids going to NIU from Rockford Public Schools by 380 percent last year 59 percent of them were uh, minority children and 79 percent of them were first-generation college going students this is critical we know communities that have higher educational attainment rates have lower crime rates we absolutely need to increase the educational attainment levels of all Rockfordians and is starting with our youth is our best investment. Number three, we need to give our children hope. So 
We started a, a bus stop program with Rockford Public Schools and it's designed to give students some hope. Let them know that we as community members are there and care for them. So we have volunteers going to five different public schools uh, at each day at dismissal time. We're simply there to give them words of encouragement, have positive interactions with adults, and also additionally to support our teachers by being additional bodies at that dismissal time. Next, with the work that we're doing, uh, with all the work that we're doing to impact the residents uh, throughout the city of Rockford, uh, we really need to address their built environment. And by built environment, I mean their neighborhoods. So this summer, we're gonna be launching a new neighborhood initiative program. Uh, so throughout the spring and summer, we're going to focus on six select neighborhoods in neighborhood areas that have been most negatively impacted by violent crime and could benefit tremendously from being connected to community resources and services. So one neighborhood at a time, employees uh, of the city of Rockford will assess the built environment and the needs that a residents have in those specific areas. Our city team and our partners will be going door to door to connect residents with much needed services. This includes police will be out there building relationships. Health and Human Services will be out there going door to door and rolling young people into early Head Start and Head Start programs uh, for early childhood education. Our community and economic development team will be signing folks up who may be in need of roof, roof replacements and roof repairs, weatherization programs, all the programs that we have to offer, we want to really go door to door in these six areas that have been most impacted by violent crime. Our partners will be going door to door and providing health screenings at the doorsteps of our residents. They'll be uh, assessing their homes for critical home repair opportunities and connecting our residents to nutritional as well as mental health services and a whole lot more. At the same time that we are uh, providing these overall services, we need to focus on that physical uh, infrastructure. So fixing sidewalks, fixing streets, making sure street signs, making sure trees are trimmed, making sure all the lighting is working, making sure that we provide hope and the best possible place to raise young people in our community. Last thing I will say is we really, as a community, have said that children are our future, we need to start acting that way. Uh, I am cautiously very optimistic about the number of organizations, the government bodies who are coming together and coalescing and actually putting their dollars, uh, their effort and their energy around things that show measurable impact on the young lives of our citizens. So uh, with that, I know uh, Chief Red and myself will be open for questions.